All right, so this video is gonna be about Chris Room's power data and Chris Room's favorite intervals. And I think, first of all, I just wanna say it's actually amazing that you can get all this data from Strava, um, and it's huge that he's posted power data. But I thought before we get into the intervals, I just wanna, I've pretty much gone through all his training data building up to the 2018 season. Obviously, it's not that much. Um, he uploaded some four weeks though. So I just wanna go through quickly what I gleaned from it. Number one, he loves hours. He does 30 hours weeks with intervals, like four weeks in a row. So that's huge. Number two, and everyone says this, but it's a cliche, it is very polarized. There's really, really hard days and very, very easy days. So he has normally two recovery days a week, I saw. Then he had maybe two or, two or three endurance rides and then one tempo efforts. But like, when I say tempo efforts, you'll see they're like an hour and a half, two hour tempo and long efforts, which is what, to be fair, Dr. Steven Silas says you need to do if you're gonna do those efforts. They should be two hours long, which he's doing. Uh, all their threshold efforts, and they're really hard. And he had also had a couple of days with sprints earlier on in the season. So that's number two take home, is that it's very, very easy. Um, I noticed that his recovery rides are really easy, like 150 watts, which like, is way below his recovery rise. I reckon he'd be at like resting heart rate 150 watts because he's like, was that fit? And I'd also say that his zone two rides are significantly lower than what I thought they'd be. They're about 220, max 240 I saw. Most of them are like 220 normalized, so very, very low. But anyway, that's enough from this part. We'll get on to his favorite intervals now. All right, so number one interval or workout is gonna be the endurance ride. So you can see here uh, that it's basically just ride real easy all day. So 200 watts, um, 220 normalized, 196 average. And like, you've got to think that it's really easy for Chris Froome. If his threshold is maybe 430, 440 minimum, you know, he's um he's going real easy. He occasionally puts in a sprint. So he did a 1250 watts um, max and little sprints. I've seen him do a bit more sprints than some of the other things. This was slightly harder day actually for his zone two, but you can see like, uh, he clearly wanted a five hour ride or Tim Kerrison did or four hours, sorry. Cause he literally like just descended the climb, did zero Watts. And then here you can see it's like four and a half hours, just climb straight back up. So obviously like, you know, I said before our altitude, I was like, why do they do it? But like, why don't they drive down? But I guess this is the same, like they needed four and a half hours. So instead of like, you know, plotting a four and a half hour route, they just ignore the descent. Cause that's literally, it was like two hours of um, 115 Watts and then uh, ride back up. So pretty interesting. Uh, next, we're going to go to uh, his tempo efforts, which I was mentioning before. Uh, these are done slightly early season. I didn't see them done as much when he was uh, when he started to train. So this this one here, I think, was in um, was December, maybe January. But you can see two hours on a TT bike, um, three hundred and twenty five watts average with these spikes. Uh, he tends to throw them in, I think, every twelve minutes or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer. But I don't think the science of the spikes is too much. And in terms of intensity of the spikes, again, I think it's just like 500 watts for a minute or something. So a minute to 45 seconds seems to be what he does. Um, and maybe 120% of FTP-ish, um, if you're will looking to copy it. Uh, but he does it there. Um, he also does one here as well. Um, and you can see that some of the progressions, like when I looked at his training, I was going week after week after week. And he'd go from like 330. He did one one of these, which I couldn't find now. It was just like 360 watts for two hours. Um, in the same interval with the little spikes everywhere. Um, and the point of the spikes obviously just generate more lactate um, and then your body clears it at a higher, um, at a higher workload. Um, so next one we're gonna go to um, is gonna be his sort of spiked thresholds. Um, it's hard to describe it, but you can sort of see it here. So like the first bit, so he'll do two minutes at like 560, so way over. Then I'll have 30 seconds rest and I'll get into like a high high tempo at like a low cadence so 60 cadence here then go back up to 460 for seven minutes um and then back to 370 but um and i guess that's just the whole lactate threshold but it seems to be that he he finds it more useful um he often does the beginning bit at higher so here was like 10 minutes really hard but a low th cadence so 60 cadence and then 10 minutes into a um into a slightly higher one as well um but yeah uh and then he does similar here 513 watts for um three minutes and then goes into a 20 minute block with spikes at 380 watts so you can see there's a lot of crossover here uh this is one of my favorite rides that's so going to bridge nicely onto the next favorite workout um but so this one again um he has a lot of spikes to begin with so if we look here um 
it, it's like a spike to begin with. Obviously, the watts are stupid, like 430 normalized for 24 minutes, but we'll, we'll get onto even more stupid numbers. So he like spikes the first one, so you can see like here it's way above threshold, then settles into like 400, then goes below, then goes higher, then goes lower. And they seem to like these intervals quite a lot. Um, he does one here as well. So if we look on the left hand side, you can see he did 20 minutes at 445 watts. Um, which is bonkers. So this was the, the this thing here again. You can see it's sort of like over unders, and I guess that's my point. Especially so far, which you've probably seen, Chris Room doesn't do steady state efforts very often. They're almost always over unders, over unders. They might be quite far apart, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but it's very rarely that he just goes out and sits like 400 watts for like an hour. Um, there are some instances of that, but generally uh, he doesn't seem to do that. Um, but crossing over onto the next one, um, and you might have seen on this one as well. Uh, it's the same power file, which will we'll go here. And these are the strangest intervals I've ever seen. I've never seen any of these in my life. I've never seen anyone prescribe them. So what they are is it's like 20 seconds. Well, maybe t like it seems weird. It's like a 20 second max sprint, it seems, or 10 second max sprint, 10 second rest, and then another 10 second max, or well, not max, but like, you know, high intensity, ne not necessarily max. And then get into like a low, my high tempo. So here for him, it would be, 380 so like a high tempo um and he just does that so it's like really sprint rest sprint and then tempo and i don't really get why they do this if anyone does know because obviously i don't actually i just research on strava and look at people who seem to be fast like i'm not actually a sports scientist or anything but if anyone does know why this works quite well but you can see overall it's like a 30 second effort so it's like 10 second on 10 second off 10 seconds on um but yeah, he seems to love him. And this was the same workout where, then, where afterwards he then did 440, 450. And this was like, in my opinion, peak for him. I mean, this is April 2018, a month before the Giro is going to start. He's whacking out 450 watts. And like, okay, I know he's done more. He think he's done 470 for half an hour fresh before. Um, maybe more. But like, you know, 6.4 watts per kilo for 23 minutes, just mid-training is pretty mental. I'm uh, not going to lie. Um, and this is, an, this is another example early on. If we go up the Plateau de Glier, um, he, this is some of the Tour de France recon stages that he was doing. Um, and you can see again, uh, the same type of intervals. So super, super interesting what these are. Um, I haven't seen anyone cover this uh, at all. No one seems to have thought, oh, Chris Froome's power days are available. Maybe we should go have a look at it. But again, here you can see 30 minutes at 430 watts. And again, these are over under intervals. So maybe this workout should be one, but I think they are slightly different. They're over under ones that he seems to like. And then also, um, these spiked ones, which again, I haven't seen before. And if we go over to this last one, this is on the Tourmalet and we get to see uh, him do some 30, 50, uh, the 40, 20s to begin with, which were these ones. Um, and then after that, he goes into those surge, stop, surge again. Um, and this builds into my first point as well, that Chris Room's training is very polarized. He doesn't do like noodle around that much. Um, he just goes really, really hard or pretty easy. Um, and then again here, you can see 20 minutes at 430 watts over unders. And now you're starting to get to see what Chris Room's training is like. Pretty, pretty similar. Like I should have really combined this into one, but it's like there's over under efforts um, and then the, the surge and repeat. And then the last ones I want to do is just before he seems to race, he seems to do these efforts here, which are about a minute and a half. Uh, I'll go into this power, power file. A minute and a half, max 30 seconds off. And they look so hard. Um, so you can see here, he's, he did a couple warm up ones here. This is quite a good way to see. So he's done, like most of these ones to begin with are just as warm up. Then he says five minutes just cruising around and then a minute and a half max, I guess, 30 seconds off, minute and a half max, 30 seconds, well, 440 is not really off, 651 for, and that's when I'm like, this boy's anaerobic capacity is actually huge. Like minute and a half at 650 watts and then 430 and then 540 and these are just like over-unders but on a different level. Um, and then we'll, we can see the afterwards, but this is sort of like getting race for race intensity. Um, so you can see here that it's pretty, pretty crazy the numbers the boy does um and i think these ones afterwards uh, aren't too aren't too crazy um so i think that was uh, we'll have a look at the date because the dates is always quite interesting obviously for periodization so this is the 29th of april uh i'm not sure when the tour about starts but i assume it's probably just before then so maybe that was why he started doing them. but obviously jira's around the corner on the 29th yeah sorry jira must be starting next week i think and then this is the 24th of june so again um, he's going to start to do the tour soon. Uh, he's in Isola training at altitude. Uh, and again, you can see these really, really hard efforts. 10 minutes of 400 watts, but that doesn't really show the full story because you can see here, it's like a minute and a half at 470 here. Um, but it, it does get more impressive. So anyway, 
those are the top five that I found. Um, I can look into more of them. I mean, I just do love going through Chris Froome's Strava Day, as you can probably tell. Um, but yeah, that's that's all for today. I hope you did enjoy. Um, I mean, should have more videos like this because I think it's really interesting looking how the pros train. I don't think many sports you really get an open access when a world champion and Chris, well, he's not a world champion, you know what I mean? Like the highest level p professional athlete, Chris Froome, won have four tours, a Giro, a Welter. I mean, how often do you just get a look through his training files? Not very often. So I think um, I think it's pretty cool, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So anyway, cheers for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.